Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a totally tubular day today. By the way, I said totally tubular as a joke, just so we're on the same page here. And this video is just like the title says, we're going to be ranking all seven Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies from the worst to the best. Keep in mind though, this is just my opinion, and I would love to see your ranking in the comment section down below. And without any further ado, let's hop right into the ranking. So coming in last place is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. And this is a movie where pretty much everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. First of all, the low budget is so obvious. You never even see them out in the streets of New York. It's just on the set in the sewers and then out in the woods somewhere wherever they filmed the Japan stuff. Which, by the way, the whole premise of this is that they travel back in time to Japan, which is completely wacky, but could make for some fun stuff. However, it just comes off as kind of boring, honestly. And they totally wasted Casey Jones in this movie. He should have gone on the adventure with them, but instead he just stayed in the sewers with the Japanese people that got transported to the future. And as I said, the low budget is bad, which makes the special effects not great. And to add on top of this disaster, they changed the design for the Ninja Turtles suits, which is just super distracting. They look so much more rubbery and it is just so weird. Coming in at number six is TMNT from 2007, and this is kind of an interesting standalone movie that they made, where obviously the CGI is pretty easy to tell it's from 2007, but I'm not gonna hold that against the movie. Overall, I think the turtle designs are okay, but as for the human characters and Splinter, they all kinda look like Disney characters, to be quite honest. But overall, when it comes to this movie, I would say it works on a character development level. I kind of like what they did with the turtles. But on a story level, it is just the most random garbage that I've ever seen. It has to do with these ancient people that turn to rocks and then they want to capture 13 monsters. And it's just such a weird plot for a Ninja Turtles movie. At least they're able to throw the Foot Clan in there. But it just comes off as very weird. And the story also kind of deals with Leonardo being gone for like a year and then coming back. Which makes it feel more like it should be the sequel to another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Or maybe even the third one in a trilogy. So to sum it all up, it works on a character level but not so much on a story level. But I do know a lot of people do really like this movie. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little bit higher in some of the rankings in the comments. Coming in at number 5 is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2014. This was the reboot where they were able to make the turtles with CGI instead of the suits. And for everything this film is going for, it comes off as very underwhelming. Now this was produced by Michael Bay who worked on the Transformers movies. And this almost feels like it's trying to be a Transformers movie where they made the story all weird, where there's just this deep plot that the turtles were actually in this laboratory that April O'Neil's father was working on. And then the mutation actually makes them grow like over six feet tall. And all of a sudden they're bulletproof, which makes it very weird because like, how are they gonna lose? Not to mention that the Foot Clan is now this like shooting clan instead of this martial arts clan. I mean, they are kind of a mixture of both, but it doesn't need to be with guns. And as I said, the turtles are bulletproof, so what does it even matter? So in order to make Shredder a threat to them, he has to have like this super big suit and when it comes to the storytelling, I can kind of see what they were going for by waiting to reveal the turtles until a little bit later into the movie after we've already been introduced to April and as they like slowly emerge from the shadows. That would have been a good idea if the movie itself before that wasn't so boring and underwhelming. Still though, it is a little bit entertaining. If you're a big fan of Ninja Turtles, you might want to check this out. But as I said, it's not as good as it should have been. Coming in at number four is Out of the Shadows, and this was definitely an improvement over the 2014 one, where it seems like they listened to the criticism and tried to improve upon it. It's a little bit more lighthearted. The vibe is definitely better, and I think the character arcs of the Turtles and their relationships with each other, their personalities, it all shines more. But that's not to say it's without its flaws. Obviously, they introduced Casey Jones into this movie, and he's really only Casey Jones in like one sequence where he has the mask, and he's fighting people with hockey sticks. 
But other than that, he's just kind of just there and just some random guy. And although I do think the villains are a little bit better, you know, what they did with Shredder and introducing Krang and Bebop and Rocksteady, although I don't think the setup for all of that was that great. It is a little bit better, but I do think the stakes with like the whole world in danger at the end just don't feel as high as they should be. So definitely an improvement over the first one, but it still has quite a few problems. Coming in at number three is Secret of the Ooze. This was the sequel to the original one. And in so many ways, this movie shouldn't even work because you had parents complaining about the violence in the first one, so they had to tone it down, and they don't even use their weapons, and it's just way more lighthearted. But it's still pretty entertaining. It's definitely not realistic, but it is pretty nice what they're able to do by bringing back Shredder and having the Foot Clan in there, and it is pretty cool how they explore the Turtles' origins. And as I said, it's not like a masterpiece, but it's pretty fun, and I think it even improves upon making sure that the Turtles' personalities stick out for one another so overall a pretty good movie coming in at number two is a mutant mayhem and there's a little bit of a gap between number three and number two and i think this movie definitely has the most unique vibe out of any of the movies on this list after so many years of ninja turtles and various forms of media it was still able to figure out something fresh to do with these characters and it does something very fresh with animation. In recent years, they've been experimenting with combining two-dimensional and three-dimensional stuff. And this might be my favorite example because it's like almost kind of like a comic book painting style. It's just very good and I love how they made the Turtles designs unique from one another and so many other forms of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles media. They kind of all just look the same but have a different color mask. But this really just understands that the Turtles are teenagers and you get that immature vibe. It's also very funny and the mutants are definitely some cool characters. The only thing keeping this from the number one spot is kind of in the second half of the story and kind of the ending final battle. It doesn't really do anything too clever with the plot. It just feels good enough. But the setup was very good. And Mr. Beast also had a voice role in this movie, which makes it very awesome. But coming in at number one is the original from 1990. Now, this was just a few years after this franchise was created through comics, toys, and the TV show. And this definitely found a good way to blend the tone, where it's pretty lighthearted, but there is this sense of darkness to it, especially in certain scenes sequences. The Foot Clan seems like a good threat, a great set of villains. Shredder is awesome in this movie. Casey Jones and April O'Neil make great side characters. This is the peak version of both of them. And the character arcs that the Turtles have is really good. And this has some of the best action that you would want from this franchise. So overall, that was my ranking. Again, share yours in the comments section down below. I would love to see it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. Just, 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 just,